Welcome back to Hungry for Adventure. In this video, we're going to give you our top 10 tips and tricks for coming to Disneyland with a baby. Um, this, we're gonna kind of cover like newborn to maybe like 24 months. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and we can give you updated videos in the future. We're going to give you some like park specific tips and then give you some products that we like to use. And all the products will be linked down in the description below. Come with us on this adventure. Number one on our list, and probably the biggest advice that I have for anyone who asks me about taking their baby to Disneyland is figuring out naps. So if you're staying at a Disney resort and in the hotel, I would recommend just going back to your room and getting a good solid nap in the room. But if you're not staying at one of the hotels, you on the go naps are super important. Um, for us, we have her nap in her stroller. We lie her stroller flat and uh, cover it with her stroller cover. It's actually a, a nursing scarf that we put over the stroller. And then we use our portable white noise machine and use that to um, create white noise for her, a dark environment and white noise. And then we like to come to an area of the park that has not as much music because i don't know if you have noticed but disneyland always has music at like most of the corners of the park so our favorite spot is actually between tomorrowland and matterhorn you can actually get to it through tomorrowland and go around past galactic grill towards that you'll see the mountain and that's the little pathway you can take otherwise you can also come from the castle side when you first see the Matterhorn, you'll see a little pathway. And so you'll turn right before you pass the mountain. And so this is our favorite area because there's actual like wind noises from and water noises from the Matterhorn ride that adds kind of to that white noise. And we just kind of walk her back and forth in a stroller and rock her until she goes to sleep. And then usually once she's asleep, we just kind of keep walking around the park to just, just so she could get it a good solid like at least our nap. Here she is napping right now. Number two on our list is making use of the baby care center. There's one at each park at Disneyland. So Disneyland has it at the end of Main Street next to the little uh, corn dog cart, the little red corn dog cart. And in Disney California Adventure, it is right behind like your deli, um, shop and so each of those places have a place like changing tables with like more amenities than the regular changing tables in the bathrooms there's like sheets there there's toddler toilets if your your little ones uh using that already and then there's uh microwaves there's bottle warmers for you to heat up any food or milk or formula and then there's actually nursing stations um, if you're breastfeeding and then there's a pumping station if you're um, pumping and there's actually an outlet you could actually check your um, pump into the baby care center so you don't have to carry it around all day which is nice and you just go in there every time you need to use it and uh, let them know that you're checking it out and you could leave it there. Number three on our list is how to address hot days at the park. Obviously today it's not that hot, you know, but it is sunny California, so it does get warm most of the year. So I would recommend bringing a sun hat of some sort. She's not gonna like it if I put it on her. <laughs> it provides nice uh, shade from the sun. And then number two, I would recommend some sunscreen. This one is good. Uh, you can use it from six months. It's mineral sunscreen, so it doesn't like get absorbed into the skin. And it's SPF 50, so it's kept her uh, nice and not sunburnt. And then number three, 
I would recommend bringing a portable battery operated fan. They do sell like fan mister bottles here, but these are more, much more reliable. And because it has a little tripod bottom, you could like wrap it around your stroller and you can just point it to yourself. You can just point it to yourself too, if you need to cool down. You don't want the fan? You don't want the fan? Here, you want the fan? Here we go. Whoop, there we go. <laughs> Number four on our list is tips for carrying your baby. So obviously you're gonna wanna bring a stroller of some sort. Um, probably the best kind I would say is the ones that lie flat so you could do your on the go naps. Um, they did ban wagons. You'll see them occasionally, but they did technically ban them and so you're probably not gonna be able to get them in. So definitely bring a stroller for that. And then I love this baby carrier. We've been using it like religiously when we come to Disneyland. This one's the Omni 360 and it's perfect because it spaces inward and outward and Kayla loves sitting outwards, especially when we go on rides. So this one gives the best option for that. I would highly recommend bringing a carrier of some sort because you can't bring your strollers into your the ride lines and so you're gonna have to carry the baby and your arms will fall off. And it's convenient if it's outward facing, you can go on the ride and with the baby in the carrier. And so it just makes things a lot easier. This is so clutch. All right, time for a break. Let's go on a ride. Number five for our tips is food and snacks and milk. This is super important because, you know, a hungry baby gets super fussy. And so if your baby is under one and they're still on formula or breast milk, um, you can always go to the baby care centers and use their bottle warmers and things like that to heat it up if your baby needs it warmed up. I personally bought the Baby's Brew bottle warmer and that actually is battery operated and you're able to just heat it on the go. Um, this works for both breast milk as well as using heating up water for formula. Now that she's a little bit older, um, she doesn't need it warm. So we just brought her cold milk in an insulated uh, water bottle. So it's a hydro flask for this. And so we just pour it in her little easy peasy cup and that's how she drinks her milk. Also important is snacks. So here we have the Amara smoothie milk. And this is one, this was from Costco and it's like a plant-based uh, smoothie melt and it's like melts in their mouth. It's really tasty, she loves it. And we also brought the plum super puffs, which are basically little cereal puffs. She loves these. We also have on hand the teether crackers because she's a little bit older so she can like chew as well as um, we bring the food pouch just in case because for extra nutrients because they do have food that she can eat like there's kids menus and they're usually like nuggets and mac and cheese and stuff and they have fruits and stuff but they don't have a lot of vegetables I want to say for kids as much so we did bring this as well as toast. All in all food preparation, bring as many snacks as possible. We brought a cooler for that. And one thing to really note, one thing to note is that if your baby is already on whole milk, you're going to have to search for it. So your options really are to bring your own whole milk, I would say, and bring it in like a insulated bottle or you know, survive the day with 2% milk because all of the quick service places and things like that have 2% milk. 
or the last option would be to go find yourself the Starbucks or coffee shops like not just like black coffee but like places that serve like lattes and stuff because then they'll have whole milk that you can buy but otherwise the entire park really only sells two percent milk so that's just something that you'll have to prepare for you drink all your milk good job baby I can't afford <laughs> Number six on our list is to make use of the Disneyland app. You can download this on your phone ahead of time and I would recommend putting all of your party's tickets into all of the adults phones in your party and that way you, when you scan into the park the adults can scan everyone in including the kids and it's just easier that way and then if you do purchase Genie Plus and get the lightning lanes um, the adults can scan for the whole party which can speed things up when you have kids. Um, and then I also use the app all the time for the mobile order. When you have a fussy baby or something and like you just want to grab food and go, it is the best way to do that. Um, you just select the time that you want to pick up, uh, pick up your food and then order ahead of time. You, you can link your credit card on there. And then you just, when you're when you're when you arrive at the place at the arrival time you just say that you're there and then you just go pick up your food that way just make everything easier all right i have the app open here i'm gonna go to the menu button at the very bottom hit mobile food orders and then create a new order it'll show you the places that are closer to you we're gonna go to red rose tavern let's get a strawberry sweetheart tea add and then when you if you do have a magic key pass when you go to pay for it it'll show up the discount will show up at the top you just purchase and then I'm just gonna hit I'm here prepare my order because I'm right next to the restaurant and then once it's ready, it'll give me a window and I'll go pick it up. All right, now it says that my mobile order is ready. And so I'll just go to window five and pick up my order. Number seven on our tips and tricks list is to utilize the rider switch. There's gonna be times where you're not gonna be riding rides with the baby and maybe she's napping and you're gonna to wanna to ride something for yourself. So you could use the rider switch function and that is available for basically any ride that the baby can't go on. So if the baby can go on it, they usually don't have it available. So Haunted Mansion, for example, does not have it available. But rides like Big Thunder Mountain Railroad or like Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run do, you can check if Rider Switch is available on the app, if you go into the attractions and like look in the attraction, in terms of using your Rider Switch, you just take your phone, you have to have it on your mobile app, your ticket, and you go to the front entrance of the ride and there will be a cast member there and you ask them for Rider Switch. You can do any combination. So if it's two parents, one can go at a time. But if it's a bigger group, multiple people, you can split up so it's like three and three or what you know whatever combination they'll basically scan your tickets and then when the first person comes off the ride the second parent can go and when they scan it it'll give you an access and you'll go to the front of the line and so it's a really cool way to enjoy the park if your baby's too young to ride something or if they're napping So number eight is to bring a lot of toys. You would think that Disneyland has enough stuff for, to keep her distracted and entertained, but we always bring a lot of toys. So this is a little teething ring. We like to bring um, some like pacifier clips and put, hang some toys off of it because that, she tends to throw her toys too. This is Sophie, the very famous Sophie Leisure Off. There's a fidget popper. This is usually her favorite, but she's kind of distracted right now. And then just another like button toy, teething ring that she has in her hand. And there's like a book toy. There's a teething ring. 
We just like to bring a variety of different things because she gets tired of things and then like wants to switch them around. And so that is our advice. We also have this like mat from Busy Baby and it has little tethers that sometimes we use to tether the toys as well. So these are all things that are typically helpful in keeping her distracted. Look, it's a teeny toy. Wow, which toy do you want? Number nine on our list is something that I guess you wouldn't necessarily expect, but it's for the parents. It's to wear good shoes. I'm wearing some New Balance shoes, but generally like since you're walking so much and you're not just like walking by yourself, you're carrying your child and things like that. It's really, really, really important for your feet, your legs, your back to have some good shoes, good ergonomic shoes. Um, that you can walk in all day. You're gonna walk at least 10,000 steps during your day here, so definitely important. Another pro tip is that if you're a woman who doesn't have um, pockets for your things like your cell phone and things like that, I highly recommend bringing a fanny pack. I have a Herschel hand fanny pack that I use all the time, and uh, that's, I, I usually wear it like even outside of Disneyland I wear it all the time I'm so glad fanny packs are back in style let's just say that <laughs> last but not least at number 10 is to take your time the best laid plans often go awry and you know you're gonna plan your this like day and you know things are gonna happen and you're gonna have to make changes and you're just gonna have to adapt you're not gonna be able to go on all the rides like you used to and you're gonna have to eat something that you didn't think you were gonna eat it's uh, coming to Disneyland with a baby, you just have to be flexible. And so that is my number one tip. Um, also, if you're debating between Disneyland and Disney California Adventure, a lot of people ask me which one um, they should take their baby. It depends on what you're trying to do. If you're just trying to hang out and not go on a lot of rides, I would say Disney California Adventure is probably a little bit more relaxed, more chill, and usually a little less crowded. But if you want your baby to go on a lot of the rides with you, definitely choose Disneyland because there's a lot more rides that are all ages and that allow lap sitting. Basically all of Fantasyland, as well as Haunted Mansion, Pirates of the Caribbean, um, Buzz Lightyear, Winnie the Pooh, all of those allow babies to sit on your lap. So there, whereas Disney California Adventures only has like Monsters Inc. and Little Mermaid and a couple of like their like fair rides. So there's definitely a lot more for your baby to ride when you're there at Disneyland. Um, that's a wrap on this list. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video or if you find it helpful, please give, give us a thumbs up. And if you want more content like this or want to join us on our other food adventures, make sure you hit subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you on the next one. Bye.